pleasure to be with a room full of people who don't believe that Mother Earth should be run like a business. So as Governor Brown kicks off this self-congratulatory summit, so-called climate summit, it is really long past time to have a conversation, an honest conversation, about the existential crisis that we face. Climate chaos is accelerating before our very eyes. The fires, the floods, the hurricanes, and drought are having a devastating impact on people. And poor people and people of color are being hit the hardest. I mean, just look at what's happened with Puerto Rico. Recent studies put the death toll now in line with the 9-11 attacks from one storm, 3,000 people. And remember following 9-11, politicians found the financial resources to engage in two misguided wars to create the Department of Homeland Security to quickly transform airport security. Yet, the impact of climate change is already many times worse than that of 9-11, and we haven't even begun to feel the, the very worst impacts. Yet the silence from our politicians, both Republican and Democratic, is deafening. But we can't let this unprecedented crisis leave us depressed or frozen with fear. We can still stop the worst of climate change if we take the urgent and visionary action. It's time to stop talking about 2045 or 2050 and make the dramatic changes we need now. We have the technology. We have to create the political will. Scientists are telling us if we don't move off of fossil fuels, we will soon cross a point of no return. Now with this dire situation and all of the climate change related tragedies that California has experienced, you would think that Governor Brown would be doing all that he could to move the state off of fossil fuels. You would think that the Global Climate Summit he's hosting this week would be all about developing a plan to immediately transition the state and the country to 100% renewable, clean energy. But unfortunately, Brown is part of the problem, not the solution. While California is viewed nationally and globally as an environmental leader, this image is undeserved. California is still the third largest oil producing state in the country. California is the biggest dairy state in the union with more than 1.8 million cows that are contributing significantly to climate change. Toxic oil wastewater is being used to irrigate crops. Big oil and big ag play an outsized role in the state's politics, and they've blocked the state level action that would address these problems. Under Governor Brown's watch, fracking and extreme oil and gas extraction have expanded across the state. He's been vocal in opposing Trump's offshore drilling plans, but behind the scenes, Brown is quietly rolling out the red carpet to oil and gas interests in California, authorizing hundreds of offshore wells that threaten California's iconic shoreline. In fact, he fired two top regulators after oil and gas interests complained that they weren't getting their drilling permits approved quickly enough. Governor Brown's approach to greenhouse gas pollution in California is proof.
pro-industry, not pro-climate or pro-people. Studies show that the state's carbon cap and trade program, which, which lets industry pay to pollute, hasn't reduced emissions, and it's actually worsened pollution problems in many communities. Not only that, the updated cap and trade plan prevents local regulators from enacting the policies that would actually reduce emissions. It gives tax cuts to corporations, it funnels money to factory farms, and it allows polluters to avoid emission reduction through these ridiculous criminal offset technicalities. Governor Brown refuses to shut down the disaster-plagued Aliso Canyon gas field in Los Angeles. Every day, families in the San Fernando Valley experience horrible problems with their health, including bleeding, rashes, nausea, and headaches from Aliso Canyon's toxic leaks. A health survey found cancer-causing chemicals such as uranium and benzene in children's hair and urine samples. Meanwhile, Brown's sister has made millions as a board member of SEMPRA, which owns the field. That's real corruption.